This is Benin, one of the smaller countries of West Africa. I'm checking out the tourist potential here and seeing how it affects the lives of local people. People like those who must keep the tourist industry going. Most tourists arrive here in Cotonou. It's not the official capital, but the biggest city by far. With a population of at least a million and growing, and a major transport hub for the region. If you want to stay near the centre it could be noisy and you may get a hotel view like this. Exploring the city starts with an important decision. Do I risk riding on a demijohn, the local word for get me there fast? I opt for the not quite so fast taxi and head for Ganvi, one of the main tourist spots a few miles from town. It may not be the Venice of Africa that it's claimed, but it's a fascinating view of everyday life. There are several souvenir shops on the tour, but scenes like this are not just for the tourist. This is a living community, but one that lives with the reality of land shortage. In fact, much of the city is on marshland. Visiting the City Council, I learn more about the challenges of raising living standards in a place like this. The Head of Finance tells me how they are setting up a proper system for land records. Most people still have to get by with no documentation, or with arrangements that would fall far short of what I would want for my home. Stay on the coast and you can't fully understand Benin. So I head north for Abome, a few hours drive up country, and once the capital of an empire that flourished here between the 16th and 19th centuries. It's a very different place. And, and this is what you're more likely to see outside your hotel. The museum at the site of the Royal Palace is a must. A great place to learn about the history of the kingdom known as Dahomey. Don't expect to be able to film in the sacred parts of the site. You'll just have to take my word for it that the king's throne rests on the skulls of his enemies. Since those times, the years of colonialism and independence have changed the way in which government is undertaken. The local marais or council has a town planning department and its director is keen to tell me how all the work they're doing on land reform means that they can prepare better to meet the economic and social needs of the town. A difference is certainly needed here in the inland parts of Benin where traditional ways are still common and customary practices and land use are widespread. Travelling south again is another window on 21st century Africa. Most Africans don't live in cities. Next stop, Weida. It's a unique place, forever linked to its part in the slave trade. The best introduction is Bruce Chatwin's book, The Viceroy of Weida, about a Brazilian who became the king's agent, organising the slave trade well after its abolition in Europe. His reward included many wives, and today the family compound is still here, next to the auction tree. It's estimated that up to 10 million Africans went into slavery from Weida. This is the road they were taken down, along the slave route. Today's tourist can follow that route, with the landmarks of departure, all the way to the door of return. But don't try swimming here, these beaches are treacherous. Instead, head back to town and reflect on the legacy of slavery and of traditional beliefs. 
Ouida is also a centre of traditional religion, or voodoo, and you can get some idea what it's about by visiting the Snake Temple. which is just across the road from the Catholic Cathedral. Portuguese, French and English all built forts here. But only the first remains. Now it's the local history museum. And when it's time to take a break, don't expect upmarket coffee shops. At the Eureka Calf you won't spend much, but you'll get a friendly service, and it's somewhere to watch local life go by. You'll find that today's life includes a lottery, but these young children left to run this street stall haven't won it yet. Clearly the people of Weida need more than a lottery. So once again, I go to see what's happening at the local council. Prosperity looks like the name of the game here. I meet with the deputy mayor and some of his staff. It's clear they want to change things, not least by getting their land registry up and running. In no time I'm back in Cotonou, now with a better understanding of this small but diverse country. I found out how some of the councils here are getting to grips with key reforms such as land registration and seeing how they're using some of the latest technology to do it. And I've learned how it's generated a tax base, which can kickstart the kind of development that is so obviously needed. From the crazy city to the ancient kingdom and back again, Benin is certainly a holiday with a difference, both an adventure and an education, an experience not to be missed.